All right, and here we are with episode three. What is up, guys? I'm Alinio, and today we're going to go over the third episode for the counterplay series of Katarina, how to play against every champion in League of Legends. We're going to highlight now for episode three these six champions right here, Fizz, Galio, Heimerdonger, Jace, Karma, and Karthos. Right, we're going to highlight these champions. We're also going to be explaining the masteries, which I will show on the screen here. These are the masteries I will use in every matchup, so I will explain them for every matchup as well, So just so you get a better idea. So we have Rune Page right here, Sensibly versus AP. This is the Rune Page we will use against the AP champions. And we have a Rune Page here versus AD champions, which we will go through right now. So versus AD champions is full armor seals, a uh, full magic penetration glyphs, two AP quints, one magic pen quint, and nine AD marks. Versus AP, we use the exact same thing except instead of armor seals, we use health per level seals. So there is that. We will also be explaining the items. So we will explain starting items such as, you know, longsword, refillable, gunblade, and then from here we will explain the items you buy after gunblade. You buy whatever item is based on the situation. So you go longsword, refillable, gunblade. That's always going to be your universal starting build path. You always go for this. Doesn't matter if you're behind, ahead. You always go for gunblade because it is a crucial item on Katarina. Katarina has 80 scalings on her shampo and passive, and that really complements her kit. If you rush, for example, an abyssal scepter, like you might be wondering, Al Nino, I'm against an Annie player or a LeBlanc player. I need Abyssal Scepter to deal with that threat, so doesn't it make more sense to buy Abyssal? No, you actually do not rush Abyssal because it completely fucks your early damage to a, such a high extent that Gunblade completely overpowers Abyssal in every way. Even if you're behind, Gunblade has the self-sustain part with basic attacks and AoE giving you back life thanks to its lifesteal. After you buy Gunblade, you pick one of these items here based on the situation. Zonya being for the safe snowballing. If you want a safe snowball, you buy Zonya. If you're hard carrying, buy Rabadon. Keep in mind you only buy Rabadon if your whole team is also doing well and you're pretty sure that you're going to win the game. You buy Rabadon after Gunblade. Then Abyssal Scepter is the item you buy after Gunblade if you're against a LeBlanc or an Annie and you feel like you need that defense stat. Um, however, I usually would buy Zonya even against a LeBlanc or Annie because Zonya allows you to use the active and be safe and puts you in a status which is actually extremely good against an Annie flash ult or shit like that. I feel like the Zonya active is a lot more is a lot better against Abyssal in terms of defense stat. But you can choose Abyssal if you want. I'm not saying this is a bad item. In no way is this a bad item, but you can pick it if you need it, if you feel like you absolutely need it. However, I'm kind of against it after Gunblade because the Azonia active is so damn good and helps you in every situation. Even if you're against like a Vi jungle, buy Zonia after Gunblade. Even if you're carrying, snowballing, Zonia is just such a good safe option that allows you to snowball safely is basically what this is. But if they don't have a Vi jungle, if they don't have like a scary Zac engage or something like that, buy Abyssal. Up to you. Rhinelas Crystal Scepter is probably going to be the last option here and probably the least favorable option because Rhylai has been nerfed in terms of its slow, in terms of its damage. It used to be very good on uh, reworked cat but it got nerfed to hell and I still think it's a decent item if you feel like you really need it but then again you should always buy Zonya. It's 300, Zonya is 300 gold more expensive than Rhylai so it's not bad to just farm for that 300 extra gold. And Zonya is a thousand times better than Rylai. So Rylai will always be like your last option. But it's an option regardless, so I'm going to include it in there. So that's it for the item build paths. Now we're going to dive into matchups. Our first matchup is going to be this person right here, Biz. And the masteries will go like this for every champion, by the way. We'll explain runes, masteries, item build paths. Uh, laning phase, how to play against him in laning phase, and how to play against him in team fighting. So there's gonna be five points highlighted for every matchup. All right, just let you, you guys know beforehand. So the masteries we go against Viz is this one right here that we explained in the beginning. Uh, this is the masteries you run for all the time against every champion. Uh, we go fresh blood for the basic attack damage increase, double edged sword because double edged sword is important. Uh, double edged sword I believe is getting nerfed. Uh, patch 7.4. Um, but I still think it'd be a good option over Bounty Hunter because it gives you the most amount of damage early. Uh, go Wander, don't go, don't go for uh, Savagery 
because Wanderer gives you more mobility and you need mobility as Katarina. When I say don't go savagery is because you start long sword start anyway, so you don't you don't need that extra five damage to actually last hit a minion. I just yeah, I just don't think that's worth it. The mobility part is a lot worth it because you can catch up, roam, escape, you name it. Go for assassin mastery because obviously you're an assassin, you want the assassin mastery. The rest is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into detail about the rest of the masteries. Um, versus AP rune page, this is what you go for. Help all the seals, magic pen glyphs, one AP quint, sorry, two AP quints, one magic pen quint, and nine AD marks. You need AD marks because it helps Katarina with her basic attacks, and it helps you out trade with Shampo because you have Shampo does AD scaling damage, and your passive also does AD scaling damage. Of course, both your passive and Shampo also have AP scaling, however, the damage early part of it is really strong, and the passive spin damage is a lot high, is a lot better early than AP. So, having AD is very important on Katarina now, and Gunblade Rush, that's why you rush Gunblade, because you absolutely need Gunblade, because you're going AD marks, and that's the best way to play Katarina at the moment, is to have Gunblade and have AD marks. Uh, so that's, sorry, that's the run page, we're going against Fizz, don't go versus AD run page, obviously. Uh, against Fizz, this is the items you want to buy. Uh, Longsword, your fellow potions, and then make your way into Gunblade. Now keep in mind here, when you go for you, you buy one longsword, then you buy another longsword, and then you buy Hexjet Revolver, and then after Hexjet Revolver, you finish Cutlass, and then after Cutlass, you buy Gunblade. Don't rush into Cutlass. That's a big mistake some people do, because Cutlass early damage doesn't help you out trade. Hexer Devolver helps you out trade. But you want to go for double long sword, because it increases your AD scaling on Shampo and your AD scaling on passive. So you want to absolutely make sure you have two long swords just to increase your damage. If you don't have enough money to buy long sword and revolver, just go straight for the revolver and then buy your cutlass finish it later doesn't matter hex revolver just allows you to out trade better you need to land basic attacks to out trade your enemies and also a lot of the times you're basic attacking with katarina so it just makes sense to buy a revolver instead of cutlass because you don't care about the slow just yet so next these are the options that you have against fizz um you buy most of the scenario Everything here is situational, so it depends on the game flow, it depends how you're doing, it depends how your team is doing. So, like I said before, I'm not going to go too deep into detail on these again, because I already said beforehand when the video started, the exact summary of what you should buy in what situation. But typically against Fizz, if I'm snowballing, I go for Rabadon. If my team is snowballing, so and our whole team is doing well, and even if I'm like 9-0, like let's say I'm 9-0 and my team's doing really shit, I will still buy Zonya instead of Rabadon, even if I'm 9-0. Because if you buy Gunblade, Rab, and you're the only strong one, you're gonna get popped. Like, no one cares if you go in, you're gonna get popped, right? So that's why I go Zonya. Always after Gunblade, if I'm the only one snowballing on my team, and my whole team's doing shit, I go Zonya. If my team, however, is doing great, and I'm doing great, and everything's working out, I buy Rabadon. If I'm 100% sure I'm gonna win the game, I buy Rabadon. Buy Abyssal if you feel like you're under threat, however, I don't buy Abyssal after Gunblade because I think Zonya is a better option. Rylai, I never buy Rylai anymore, but it's, it's, I put it there because it's still an option. If you feel like you need Rylai, go for Rylai. Laning phase. When playing against Fizz in laning phase, the one thing you want to punish is his E. And really when you're playing Katamine, you need to understand that you have to punish enemy abilities in the right order. And when I say that is that you watch their enemy champion, you watch how they move, and w you watch your minions how much health they have. Most Fizz players will tend to E on top of the minions to wave clear. However, smart Fizz players will know that you can punish them when using E. When I say the word punish, keep in mind, I'm going to use this word a lot in this video. I use it in all my videos always. The word punish. The word punish is you punish an enemy for doing something in lane. That's what that term means. I'm going to give you an example real quick. Another Mortal Kombat example. In fighting games, you always punish your enemies for doing a certain action, and then you full combo them. Okay? So, in, for example, in a fighting game, if Scorpion, you guys know him, he throws his spear, throws it out, the enemy blocks it, and then he can punish that with something else, because Scorpion now just used it, he's vulnerable in this position, Right? So the enemy jumps to avoid it and he can combo and kill Scorpion. 
or combo him. Same thing here. Fizz uses his E on a minion wave. He doesn't understand because he thinks, oh, I'm just going to wave clear. Nothing's going to happen. This is a lot of people don't understand is that you can punish your enemy for every little thing he does and punish enemy cooldowns when they're down. Fizz doesn't have E. What does his E do? It jumps and he can escape he can escape you if you go on him right so if he doesn't have that he can't escape you it's really that simple pre lev 6 okay he uses the on a minion wave punish that shit don't punish him on the turret obviously if he's trying to wave clear pre lev 6 don't punish him under his turret because you're gonna receive turret aggro and that's not worth it but in lane if he uses that go for him keep in mind you don't always have to do that in a lot of situations, if he's trying to last hit a minion, he walks up to it, right? He walks up, he's melee range, okay? He walks to a minion, poke, walk back, right? That's what he do to last hit, okay? So as you see him walking up to last hit a minion, trade him with a basic attack, or trade him with uh, Shampo, basic attack, force him to E, and then WQ, get the reset on W, and then Shampo on your Q dagger, and then basic attack again. This is what people would do. Uh, typically against Fizz if you're cat. You punish him for trying to last hit a minion. You do that for every champion, not just Fizz. So you E basic attack or simply if you're melee range, as you see your minion drop low HP, of course he's gonna last hit it. He wants to last hit it. And he especially wants to do that when it's a cannon minion. So that's important. That's going to be referred to in every matchup here. You, if you see him walking up to last hit, punish him. And keep your eyes on your ally minions. You need to know how much minions H your, your HP minions have. So you can punish. Um, so after level 6 he gets ult. Um, you can punish Fizz even if he has ult. Uh, as long as he doesn't have E. Because his E can avoid your ult damage. And he can escape your range. Uh, thankfully you have Shampo. So if you get resets you can punish him. If Fizz has ult don't worry. Let's say he's trying to last hit a minion. You punish him. E basic attack WQ. Move to the left or right in case he ults. Because there's a high chance that he might. Okay. So make sure you move to the left or right to dodge Fizz R. If he does throw it out, grab the W dagger and then grab, uh, grab the Q dagger. Of course he's gonna E at that point, but you have a reset, it's fine. If you see him low enough, go for him after you get the Q Shampo reset. Go for him, if he E's out of it, Shampo on him again, because you got the Shampo reset on the Q dagger. Shampo, basic attack, R. There you go. So you wanna pay attention to that. Uh, the best way to punish a Fizz, the best possible way, is when his ulti is on cooldown and he just uses his E. That's it. He's fucked. He has absolutely no chance to retaliate. He, have to, he has to eat your damage. So E, basic attack, W, Q, R. Wait for him to walk away. He has to walk away because he can't E, right? He, it's on cooldown and his ult is on cooldown. Shampo on the Q dagger, basic attack. You always want a basic attack. Don't ever forget about basic attacking. Even when I E, I always say E, basic attack. Don't E, W. E, basic attack, W, Q. Remember, you have AD marks. You're going Gunblade. You always want to land a basic attack. Always. Always remember, you want to add as much DPS in there as possible to kill your enemy as fast as possible. So that's how you deal with Fizz around level 6 and before level 6. And punish, his minion, punish, punish him for last setting minions and all that. Team fights. Fizz is, you know, not the scariest guy to deal with only because there's a lot more threat in the late game like a Zac or a Maokai or a Nautilus these guys are more threatening in the late game because they scale however, if you're up against a fed Fizz you absolutely want to watch out for that He's a, he does a lot of damage, watch out for his ult watch out for his E the same concept applies to late game don't take it don't take it seriously when I say Fizz is not good in late game or something like that because it really depends on the game flow it depends how you did, it depends how he did, it depends how much farm he had that all comes in at the late game so that's not something that that's not something that can be explained to some extent because Fizz players can tend to be fed or not fed and there's no way that I can tell what's gonna happen in that one game but if he is fed you wanna watch out for his R, you wanna watch out for his gap closing, you always wanna look at him if he's missing and you're having a team fight be careful because he could just show up that's where Zonya comes in that's why I say Zonya is really good to have so you can shampoo his all in and that's really it that's pretty much it for the late game stages uh, overall he's manageable 
Uh, he's not the scariest matchup, there are more scarier matchups. Fizz is very easy to punish because he's melee range and he has to walk up to deal damage with basic attacks. So, not the toughest matchup and it's manageable. Next up is Galio. Galio, for the masteries, I go for the same masteries. I'm not going to explain those again, but here they are. Uh, versus AP, of course, I use this room page. Since the blade versus AP. And my starting items are Longsword, Refillable, and Gunblade. These are the starting items we're going to go for in every matchup. And your item options, here they are. Right here. So, of course, Galio will build Amar because if he builds Amar, he does more damage. So, I saw Longsword, Gunblade. After that, situational, what you buy here, like we explained again, I'm going to briefly explain, not go too deep in detail because I already went deep in detail at the beginning of the video. Zonia, buy it if you're if you want a safe snowball. Rabadon, if you're fully, fully snowballing and your whole team is doing well, keep in mind your whole team is doing well, you buy Rabadon. If you are the only one that's fed, and your whole team sucks, buy Zonya. Don't buy Rab, because you're gonna get popped and everyone's gonna focus you anyway. And that's not the ideal way to deal with threats. Uh, however, if they have like, let's say two AD carries, Rab does not a bad purchase if they don't build Amar, but they are probably gonna build Amar. So Zonya is just a safe way to snowball a game. So make sure you buy Zonya. Abyssal is okay against Galio because his R does a lot of damage and his Q poke, you wanna avoid the Q poke though. Rylai, forget Rylai. I put it there because it's an option, but it's not the best option. So get rid of that. It's been nerfed and there are better options. Against Galio in laning phase, you want to watch out for his Q poke. Uh, keep in mind, Galio pre lep 6 is so easy because he is horrendous. Um, he runs out of mana way too quick. Way too quick. And that's really good for you because his basic attacks are garbage and your basic attacks are really good and you don't use mana so you have an advantage pre love 6 completely the one thing to do against Galio pre love 6 is wait for him to Q he let's say he misses Q or he Qs a minion punish that shit insta even if you have to shampo on a minion to gap close him do it just try to shampo on him directly because early damage really makes a big difference so shampo on him basic attack WQ get the W reset get the Q reset with shampo and then basic attack again after you land on the Q dagger. That's gonna be a lot of damage early. Try to hit more basic attacks if you can. If you see him go too close to his turret, stop basic attacking and go back. Uh, other than that, he will run out of mana so quickly. Um, once he gets his mana item, whatever it is, whatever mana item he gets, that's when you kinda wanna be a little careful because regardless of that, he's not that threatening pre love 6. Once he does get level 6, he has his ulti, which is the best way to counter you. Your ultimate gets cancelled by it pretty easily, so what do you do? Don't go to him. <laughs> Don't go to him, that's all you have to do. His R is only in his range area, so the best thing to do is not to get close to him. Uh, keep in mind that level 6, you do not have to play against him in that way because he, remember he has a shield that gives him defense stats and every time you hit him, he heals himself. So, what to do is don't go on him. Sorry, I, I phrased that wrong. His shield doesn't heal him if it's on him. It only heals if it's on an ally. So keep that in mind, okay? So his shield gives him defense stats and your damage is garbage. So, whenever you want to all in a Galio at level 6 or, you know, after he has ult, you always don't want to ult him when he has shield because his shield will completely, it will completely fuck you, basically. That's what, it's not gonna be, you can't do anything against the Galio shield. Because it gives him way too much defense. So, keep in mind, even pre love 6, you wanna watch out for his shield. Because it gives him a lot of defense stats. So what do you do? Uh, you try to E, basic attack, basic attack, basic attack, keep trying to basic attack. And wait for him to use shield. If he doesn't use shield, back off. Use the W and shampo back to your minions. Um, that's the best way to handle and full combo a Galio is to wait for them to use shield and the only way you can force a Galio to use shield is if you go on him directly. He's not gonna shield for no reason. He's always gonna shield if you go on him. So it just makes sense that he's gonna use that. His ult, the, here, the best way to punish a Galio is when his ult is on cooldown, his shield is on cooldown, 
and his Q is on cooldown because those are the main abilities. I completely don't refer to his move speed ability because it does shit damage, it does nothing. It only speeds allies and speeds himself, so big deal. You know, that's not gonna do shit. Uh, the main thing you wanna watch out for is his Q and his ult and his shield. Um, so if he doesn't have all these three abilities, you shump on him directly, basic attack, WQ, grab, W spin, grab, Q spin. Now let's say he doesn't have ult and he doesn't have Q, but he has shield. Okay, shampoo, basic attack, basic attack, and then wait for him to use his shield. If he doesn't, if he doesn't use shield, don't worry, just keep going. Okay, so E, basic attack, W, Q, grab the W spin, grab the Q spin, and keep basic attacking. Don't use ulti, because he, once you use ult, he's gonna shield. So that's the best way to punish a Galio, because essentially, you out damage him regardless. Even if he uses shield, it doesn't matter because you out traded him. He doesn't fight back. He can't fight back because his ult is on cooldown and his Q is on cooldown. How, what's he gonna do? He's just gonna shield E. Right? That's all he's gonna do. He's gonna shield and he's gonna use that spin, uh, sorry, not spin, the speed ability that will make him get closer to his start. That's all he's gonna do. So don't worry. You don't have to ult him to out trade him. You already outtraded him like that. You force him out of lane. You force him back to his turret. So it's fine. That's no worries. So really, that's about it for Galio in laning phase pre level six and after level six. Now in team fights is the biggest thing you want to be careful of. Watch out for his flash alt, even in lane. Watch out for his flash alt and in team fights. Watch out for his flash R. It can instantly taunt you, and that shit sucks. It's not fun to deal with. Merc treads is a viable option here because it gives you tenacity, and you don't get taunted as longer but uh, it's a good option against Galio just saying you don't have to buy it but you can um, things you want to watch out for is his flash R for sure that's the one main threat in late game um, he can Q slow you of course that sucks but mainly it's his flash R that gives a good team fight for his team so be careful for flash R's if he's missing always don't try to go in a fight if he's missing treat it like a fiddle alt if you don't know where Fiddlesticks is, of course he's gonna try to ult across a wall, right? Of course. If you're on a team fight and in the middle everyone's busy fighting, he's just gonna R over a wall and change the whole game. That's what Galio players would also typically do. They will use their speed in a bush, flash, ult. Watch out for that and let your team know because that's deadly. Next up is uh, Hamer Donger. Uh, so I guess Hamer Donger, we go for these masteries, uh, same masteries uh, versus AP runes as well. So we go for that. Uh, we start longsword, the refill potions, and gunblade. So same starting items as always. Um, and then here are your options after buying gunblade. Now you can go for Zanya here. Like I said, safe snowball. Go for Zanya. Fully snowballing, and your team's ahead by Rabadon. Buy Abyssal if you feel like you're under threat. But let's be honest, Hammer Dinger is not a burst like any burst AP champion like LeBlanc he's not a burst champion he has a rocket burst damage though so you want to be careful from that that actually does a lot of damage but Zonya is much better to have even against that because you can Zonya his whole rocket thing done easy easy peasy just use Zonya Rally is your least best option so I would highly recommend against it but it's still an option regardless so you buy it if you want to so against Heimerdinger during the laning phase you want to watch out for his turrets because he's, go he's always going to be shoving lane, right? So before Katamina's rework, she could not do anything against Hammerdinger. Like, literally nothing. You just have to sit there with a Doran shield and the refillable potion and just sit there and just keep farming, right? Keep farming under your own turret. You're going to miss a lot of minions and it's just... It was such a terrible experience overall to deal with a Hammerdinger in lane because there's nothing you can do uh, pre-rework Cat. However... Rework Katarina does way more because her early damage is so much stronger. Pre rework Katarina early damage was garbage because she could not deal with the Hammer Digger in any way unless she scales into mid game, late game. With the new Katarina, you can you don't care about his turrets. Fuck his turrets. What's he gonna do? He's gonna whack away with his you know stun thing and then shoot with turrets. You out trade him pre left six. So Let's say the best way to punish a Hammer Dingo pre level 6, by the way, is when he puts down his two turrets and then he uses his E on minions, okay? That's the most crucial ability to dodge because that stuns you 
and the stun is horrendous and that just stops your full comboing it's it, you receive more damage from turrets just overall you receive more dps while you're standing there doing nothing so you get out traded in a sense because of that so wait for that and then just jump on him even if it starts around him jump on him basic attack wq grab the w spin grab the q spin basic attack keep in mind you will get minion aggroed a uh, minion aggroed sorry you will receive minion damage because that's just the way it is you receive minion damage it sucks right but that's it you have to because that's the only way you can stop him from just you sitting there on the turret that's the only way to actually stop him from sieging your turret you out trade him pre love six you don't have to worry you out trade him um because you start with longsword and you deal a lot of damage you do more damage than him pre love six so go for it punish him he will have more minions than you but it's okay just don't go in when there's like a big wave right don't go in there only when there's like a few minions um keep in mind your spin does kill the minions as well so when you all in him and press wq your spin on the w and your spin on the q does drop the minions uh it can potentially kill them if they're low enough but most of the time you're not going to be poking the minions your own your ally minions will be dealing damage to the enemy minions but you can finish off a few ones here and there so they don't kill you don't all in a hammer dinger when he has a cannon minion on his side because you receive more damage from the cannon minion something to keep in mind against Hammerdinger is minion aggro and that comes in crucial when trying to 1v1 him because that's the only chance you're ever gonna have a 1v1 with him because most of the time he will just be shoving lane and it sucks and you sit on a turret and you're farming and you're farming and it just yeah you can't do anything it's horrible Dorn Shield's a good option if you want but I'm against Dorn Shield because I like to play aggressive with long sword and refillable potions if you buy Dorn Shield you're committing yourself to a defensive position you're not aggressing so if you don't want to aggress against Hammerdinger buy a Dorn Shield great item after level 6, he's gonna have his, you know, his ultimate, which allows him to empower his turret, or empower his grenade, or empower his rocket thing, right? So you wanna watch out for that. Um, but once he, get, he gets level 6 and you all in him, it, he's still killable. Um, keep in mind, most Hammerdinger players will buy Zonya, so try not to all in the Hammerdinger when he has ult and Zonya, because then he'll just press R on a turret and then Zonya, and he'll pretty much, to some extent, outtrade you. So you want to watch out for that, absolutely. That's actually the one thing you want to watch out for. Uh, if you get a gank though, you can 2v1 him, no problem. Even if he has R on a turret, you can still kill him. Because um, you're cat and you do a lot more damage than before. But you want to be careful. If your jungler is low HP or something and he ganks when he's low HP, that's going to suck. You give him a free kill and that's just stupid. So you want to be careful from that. So after level 6 and you enter the late, stame, uh, late game late stage of the game he's gonna be more annoying because he's gonna just shoot out rockets trying to assassinate people with rockets he's gonna have big turrets he's gonna have that bouncy bouncy grenade uh, and he's gonna have Zonya most hammerdingers like to buy Zonya try to target other champions that are better to go for um, the best way to punish a hammerdinger is when his ult is on cooldown and when his stun is on cooldown because those are the main crucial abilities that you want to watch out for so try to all in him in those stages of the game even laning phase and in team fights try to go on him when when that's the right time another another thing the third thing is when he doesn't have Zonya because that he needs Zonya to mutate your damage because you do a lot of damage with your ult and he just sits there eating it so if he has Zonya he can avoid that so watch out for that that's really it for team fights for Hamerdinger now against Jace these are the masteries I go same thing not gonna go too deep into that uh, versus AD runes of course because he's an AD champion you wanna go for the armor seals instead of the health per level seals so go for that uh, we saw a longsword refillable and gunblade and after that we pick these item choices again so here they are so we start longsword refillable and of course from there go for a revolver and then cutlass and then gunblade go refillable instead of health pots because refillable is actually really good you don't waste money on health pots so I would probably recommend you guys to go for refillable potions they're just great overall and I see I don't see why they could be bad um, go for Zonya if you're safe if you want to safe snowball and it's good against Jace um, even if you're snowballing this is still like the best purchase on cat in my opinion Rabadon if your whole team is snowballing 
and you are snowballing as well. So that's like, if you're having like the best game of your life, go Rabadon. Abyssal, don't buy it against Jace for God's sake, there's no reason. Uh, buy Abyssal late game if you have to, because it gives you 10% increased magic damage. And if they have like an AP jungler like Fiddlesticks or whatever, AP jungler, Abyssal's good, or a Rumble top, Abyssal's great. Overall, not just for the MR, but for the passive, because it, incre it gives you 10% increased magic damage, so it's a good late game item or as your last item. Rylai, forget about it. Rylai needs to get the hell out. Do not buy Rylai. I think it's a terrible item overall because it's been nerfed. It's cheap. It's good because of its cheapness, but if you have, if you really like Rylai, I'm not saying don't buy it. I'm saying there are better options, like Zonia. Zonia is good for safe snowballing. And Zonia costs 300 gold more than Rylai, so just farm for that extra 300 for Zonia. Honestly, I think Rylai is just overall. I understand the safety part of it because it gives you health, but Zonia, Zonia puts you in a status for 2.5 seconds. That's a thousand times better than Rylai, in my opinion. I think that's just a lot. it's just so fitting for Katarina to have Zonia over Rylai. So if you're planning to go defensive, buy Zonia. Even if you're planning to play aggressive, buy Zonia. You can play defensive and aggressive, that's why I love Zonia. Now against Jace during the landing phase, you want to watch out for his EQ, because he can poke you with that. The best way to avoid an EQ is to stay behind your minions, so the Q hits the minions instead of you. Um, once he goes full hammer mode, he can switch to his ult and just go full hammer mode on you. That shit sucks. So, But if if he received minion damage aggro from your ally minions, that's really good. So pre love 6, those are a few things that you need to watch out for. Now how do you punish a Jace because you actually can't exactly punish a Jace because he can just press R and switch his entire abilities. So you can't punish a cooldown when it comes to Jace. So how do you deal with him, right? So let's say he just switched to his hammer. He needs four more seconds to switch back to his gun. So that's essentially when you want to go in. He has, you have, he has four seconds. To try to you have four seconds to try to do something he's gonna knock you back he's gonna do some damage to you and yeah that's something you want to watch out for if you can try to wait for for him first to basic attack a minion because he reduces amar when he hits a minion overall i still think you out trade him to be honest there are many times where i found myself out trading a jace uh he does a lot of damage but you do a lot of damage as well so it's like you both do a lot of damage so he has to watch out for you as well. So you actually deal so much early pre love 6. So I see no reason to actually wait and punish abilities from him as much as other champions. Because you actually outtrade him in a lot of situations. He will knock you back, but it doesn't matter. Here, you E on a Jace, basic attack, WQ. He knocks you back with the hammer, okay? What do you do? Walk to the W. Shampoo on the Q. Done. <laughs> Done. Right? It doesn't matter if he knocks you back. You just take the reset on the Shampoo on the W and then Shampoo on the Q. Basic attack. He's trying to push you away. It don't matter. You're cat. Just try to get the spin damage and Shampoo directionally on the daggers. You have to at least land the Q damage. Because you're not going to be able to land W damage. You have to land E damage. There's no way that a Jace will ever last hit a minion with the... Uh, with the knockback hammer thing. He's never gonna do that. So there's no way you can punish that. Also, he can just switch back to his gun if he uses all his abilities. Switch gun, W, basic attack, basic attack, basic attack, and then he will EQ you or try something. You always wanna try to dodge EQs in lane. Pre love 6 and all that. Uh, keep in mind, it doesn't matter pre love 6 after level 6. He doesn't have an ultimate, so he can just press R whenever to switch back to his gun. So this applies to the whole stage of the lane, not pre love 6 after level 6. So keep that in mind. Now, once you enter the state, late stages of games of the fight, Jace excels at poking late game. So he's gonna try to EQ across walls. He's gonna if you're like in mid lane and you're trying to defend a mid lane turret, he could just walk to the wraith camp, press EQ, boom, right? Presses EQ and does all damage to your team. So he excels at poking. So you wanna make sure you ward all the important areas where you think a Jace will EQ. Most places that he will ward is Wraith Camp if he's sieging, or you have to be, you have to think a little bit where he will. Like if you're doing Baron, he's gonna be behind the wall trying to EQ to try to steal Baron, or 
poke you poke your team down so you back off Baron so he excels at that uh, other than that you still do a lot of damage to him you can still kill him and overall I think both of you deal a lot of damage to each other in a sense so you don't have to worry as much because you can just buy Zonya and still be in a safe spot after getting resets and team fights so Zonya is a great purchase here also Rabadon if you're snowballing if your whole team is snowballing so he's okay he's alright but he's manageable okay so next up is Karma a little bit of an annoying matchup here um so Masteries here they are against Karma same Masteries as usual we go versus AP runes of course with helper level seals and our starting items will be longsword, refill a potion, and gunblade. Your options after gunblade, here they are. Like I said, Zonya is probably going to be the best purchase here because it's a safe snowball item and I really like it. Rabadon, if Karma is shit and your whole team is snowballing, buy Rabadon. Abyssal, okay item, but. Don't bite against Karma. Karma is not a burst AP champion. She only pokes and deals a lot of damage with that. She can't burst you like any. Um, but it's good if you want to, you know, if you receive too many Qs. Like when she R's and Qs, that shit hurts, right? So you can buy an Abyssal to lower that damage. But most of the time, you're cat and you should just shampo away and dodge it as much as you can. So it's avoidable. It's something that's avoidable. You don't have to receive the damage of it. So I wouldn't recommend Abyssal as an item after Gunblade. Zonia is a great option because it helps you in every stage of the game and against their comp. So buy according to the comp and buy according to the game flow. Rylai, once again, an option that's fair enough to have. It's good, but most of the time, I would not buy it. Most of the time, Rylai is not a good option after Gunblade. Most Karma players will run Exhaust against you. Even Jace players, even all these mid laners now in this meta they always have exhaust and honestly karma is so so annoying because once you go on her she burns exhaust and then she shields and runs away like she's so like ugh, right she's obnoxious because you know you can kick her ass but she uses bullshit tools to get away from you and i'm sure as katarina players we all experience the hell of exhaust because it reduces your damage quite a lot and exhaust is the best way to deal with cat in every sense uh, keep in mind exhaust is three minutes cooldown so against karma if she does exhaust you it's three minutes make sure you time it in the chat let your jungler know if her exhaust is up or not okay but the main thing against karma is her shield her shield is probably the most annoying thing about her because you have to wait for it to go on cooldown so that you can fight her um Generally speaking, you still deal a lot of damage to her, honestly. Like, you are so quick and elusive, and sh all she does is just shield herself. She's just a very defensive champion. Um, the o her only strong damage source is her root and her Q. Uh, if she doesn't have Q, all in her, pre left 6. The best way to punish a Karma is when her Q is on cooldown. So let's say she Qs a minion, or Q try, tries to Q and misses all in karma all in the shit out of that because she cannot counterplay that all she has to do is root you but it's okay even if she does root you it's not that big of a deal because her Q is on cooldown and you can just you know walk out or shampo out so E basic attack WQ she's gonna root you she's gonna slow you with her E but it's okay get the spin on W and then get the spin on Q you will still be in melee range of her because she's trying to walk back to her turret and you want to queue the direction she's running towards too. You don't queue behind her because otherwise the queue is going to bounce towards your side of the map and you don't want that because she's not going to walk to your side of the map. She's going to walk to her side of the map most of the time. If commas are stupid, they would walk towards the dagger. So you want to walk towards where she's going and then shampo on the queue dagger directionally of where she's going. Uh, if she decides to walk back and avoid the Q dagger, just keep basic attacking her because she's still going to be in melee range of you. Or she might walk to the left or right. But it's okay, you have a shampoo reset, you can go close to her again. So it's not it's not that big of a deal. The biggest problem is her shield amount and exhaust. Exhaust just demolishes cat in every way. So that's something you want to watch out for. 
After level 6, she has empowered Qs, empowered shields, that speeds everyone, and an empowered root. So you want to watch out for those as much as possible after level 6. You have to avoid the Q. There's an indicator that shows when she presses R, her, her back sort of lights up. And you can see it's obvious. And she says that quote, like, Sa ala sa tiri, something like that, right? Something like that. When she pops Q. So you know that it's empowered. You always have to walk away or stay behind minions when she empowers her ability. Uh, her root is annoying because she locks you in place and then Qs you after. So that's also something to watch out for. That's a good setup for an enemy gank. So try to shampoo, try to save your shampoo for when she does that so you don't get rooted. So that's the best way to deal with that. Um, other than team fights, be careful from her speed uh, because it speeds everyone. RW, she spews, speeds everyone to get to your team. That's not going to be fun. But you need to watch out for that and let your team know because that is actually pretty dangerous. A full enemy team with shields rushing to your to your team. Just be careful of that. Something to watch out for and something to notify your team about. Um, RQs are going to hurt late game, so be careful from her Q poke. Overall, um, the reason Karma is annoying is because of exhaust. It's amazing how one summoner spell can make a champion annoying when in reality. Her kit's already kind of annoying without exhaust, but exhaust just makes it worse because you deal reduced damage to her because of it. So, Kama's really annoying with exhaust, and a lot of other champions are really annoying with exhaust, so that's something you want to watch out for. Always time exhausts. Exhaust is 3 minutes, so count 3 minutes forward. So, let's say Karma flashes, uh, sorry, Karma exhausts at uh, 5 minutes, her exhaust will be up in 7 minutes. Karma exhausts at 5 minutes 23 seconds. Karma, will ex uh, Karma is also be up in 8.23. So, it's really that simple. Just type it in chat, let your team know. It's 3 minutes. And really, that's it for Karma. Late stage of the game. You wanna watch out for her speed, wanna watch out for her just in general. She's not that much threatening overall. You can still burst other champions, so it's okay. Alright, so the final matchup is Karthus. Masteries, same thing. Not gonna go too deep into that again. This is by versus AP. Go for these runes. And for the items long sword, refill potion, gun blade. And here are your options after gun blade. Same thing. Same thing as every matchup. Uh, long sword starts absolutely against Karthus. Karthus has a shit early. Probably one of the worst earlies in the game because he needs to scale. And that's the only way Karthus is relevant, is when he enters stages, late stage of the game. Um, so, I would probably recommend buying a Zhonya as well, because his ultimate, you can avoid his ulti with Zhonya. And overall, if you're snowballing, or not snowballing, Zhonya is always a safe, good option to have. You could go Rabidon if you're not scared of his ult, if you're not scared of him, your whole team's ahead, and you're ahead, buy Rabidon. If you're the only one ahead, don't buy Rabidon by Zonia. So if you're if you're the only one ahead and your team's not ahead and they're all doing shit, buy Zonia. Don't buy Rab because you put yourself in a position where you're the only one that's you put yourself in a position where you will get popped insta because you don't have Zonia. So everyone's gonna focus you, everyone's gonna damage you, you're the only engage and Zonia allows you to take strong initiatives and allows you to engage because of its active. Rabadon does not do that. Rabadon only gives you damage. So Zonia gives a next level of engage so make sure you buy Zonya if you need that in that state of the game. Abyssal probably wouldn't recommend it against Karthus he's not a burst champion and who cares about his poke you can avoid poke very easily just jump on him Shrek him right don't buy Rylai I'm not even gonna explain too much here because honestly Rylai is just not good and I wouldn't recommend Rylai against the Karthus for God's sake just one shot him he's so easy he has nothing to cancel your ult either um, and there's no way he can really deal with you in a sense, so very easy to dodge his Qs as well with your shampoos. So let's get deep into the matchup here. So against Karthus, early landing phase, once you hit level 2, you should absolutely all in him. Uh, avoid his Qs early, they don't do much damage early, but avoid them, you don't want to receive damage for no reason. Um, once you hit level 2, all in the shit out of him, you do so much damage you wouldn't even believe it. Start longsword and AD marks, E, basic attack. Q and then walk up to the dagger and just keep basic attacking like basic attack walk to the Q get a spin damage basic attack basic attack basic attack kill him he will die 
Absolutely. He will die at level 2. He's so damn weak and he's just so easy to kill. Like, Karthus is easy, one of the easiest matchups for Katarina. Sure, he has an AoE on the ground and oh, you're too close to him, you receive damage. Who gives a shit? Your cat. You basically outtrade him in every way. So do that at level 2. If you're at level 3, E, basic attack, WQ, pick up the W dagger, pick up the Q spin. If you can't all in a Karthus at level 2, because he's backing away or something, and he understands your damage at level 2, he will tend to back off. That's what a good Karthus player will do, is he knows Katarina's strength. If you're against a shit Karthus, he will walk up to last hit a minion, right? The best way to punish a Karthus is when he's trying to last hit a minion, that's when you all in. Like, don't think you can all in at any point in the lane. When you see your ally minions drop low HP, Karthus wants to cue it, so he walks up to it, you see, you understand his body language, you understand that when he's walking like that, he wants to last hit that minion, so you need to understand that he's going to do that, and then, boom, once he does, E, basic attack, W, Q, all in the shit out of that, very, very easy. Level 6 Karthus is the exact same thing, really, uh, as pre-level 6, except now that he has ult, uh, he, 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 him dying doesn't matter to him. So he'll go in, die, he doesn't care, right? And because he can press R. One thing to watch out for is after you kill a Karthus, you get a reset. So shampo out so you don't receive more damage from his AoE on the ground or his Qs. Because as he's dead, he wants to Q you, right? And then presses R so to deal as much damage as possible to you to kill you. So don't worry, uh, not the hardest matchup in the world. Late game, you have Zonia, so you can avoid his ult in the late game. So it doesn't kill you. Overall, he likes late game more than early game. His early game is so bad, and Cat's early game is so good. So you have that huge advantage over him. Um, so really, not too much to worry about against Karthus. He will buy Zonia probably, so you have to deal with him accordingly when he has Zonia. Overall, very, very easy matchup. Honestly, like, it's not the hardest. There are much harder matchups, like Syndra or LeBlanc. These are much harder champions than than Karthus, so he has a really shit early, just all in him, destroy him. So that's really it for Karthus. And that pretty much is it for our episodic series for number episode 3, with all these six champions right here that we highlighted on today's video. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching episode 4, I'll, make, I'll get into work on that. So yeah, thank you guys so much for supporting the series by the way, I got a lot of people, I swear to god, I get a lot of people on my streams, on the video comments saying, where is episode 3, where is episode 3, we want to see episode 3, well here it is guys, episode 3 is out, and we will continue this, uh, this series, uh, keep in mind, the next episode, for episode 4, we will be including another series of champions, and those champions are Cassidy, Kale, Kennen, LeBlanc, Lissandra, and Lulu. Lulu mid, of course, and Lulu support. I'm gonna be highlighting both Lulu mid and Lulu support. So, those are the champions we're gonna highlight in the next episode for episode 4. Uh, thank you all so much for watching tonight's stream. I appreciate that. I said stream. <laughs> I said stream. Whoops. Thank you all so much for watching the video. And I will see you all on the rift. Peace out.